exactly that he don't know about it. While you're getting to Luke, the 19th chapter, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of you, we come today with thanksgiving in our heart, Lord, that you allowed us to wake this morning, clothing our right mind, giving us the activities of our way up, and starting us on our way up, allowing us to come out to the house of worship one more time, Lord, to receive a word to help us, Father, to be more like your son, to be more of the servants you would have us to be, to grow into that soldier that you would be pleased of. And Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that as we stand before your people, that you will let Adam forth take his own flesh of man decrease, but let your Holy Spirit increase in us, in us, Lord. We ask that you anoint our minds to think the thoughts you would have us to think, to anoint my tongue, my lips, and my tongue to speak the words that you would have me to speak, to take control of this temporary tent, this body, Father, to use as you see fit, that it don't belong to me, Lord, but it belongs unto you, Father, to you. And the Lord, I ask that you will anoint the ears of your people. Let your Holy Spirit come in, Lord, as a cloud, like your glory was in the day of Solomon in the temple, Lord. And that cloud just come in and just covers everyone in here, Lord, to anoint their ears to hear your word, to apply the ground in their heart, that your word may be planted in their heart. And then, Lord, that our life will bring forth the fruit that will be pleasing to you. And Father, if you grant us these things, we will give you the honor and the glory. We need you today. Come into this place, Father. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Our scripture reading. But before we get to our scripture reading, we have our pledge. If you haven't memorized the pledge yet, it's on the back of your program. Those that have memorized, this is my vow, my, my, my best instruction before leaving earth. It is the word of God. I will swear to show myself approved unto God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Because God said, I believe in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, man, tell me what I can and can't do. God the one that tell me that. Don't no man tell me who I am. God the one that tells me who I am. Amen. We're going to begin with the 11th verse on chapter 19. And we're going to stop with verse 27 of that said chapter. I know that there's a long text. So maybe the message will be short. But that's up to the Lord. Verse 11 says, And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable. Because he was not to the root and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. And said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to choose himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message out to him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the king, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came his first saying, Lord, the pound had gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thy good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also, O five cities. And the other came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I fear, I fear thee, 
Because thou art a Oscar, Oscar of man, thou taketh up that thou layest not down, and reapeth that thou doest not sow. And, and he said unto him, him Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knowest that I was an awesome man, taking up that I laid not down. And reaping that, that I did not so. Wherefore well, then, give it not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that has ten pounds. <laughs> and they said unto him, Lord, he had ten pounds. Why well, I say unto you that unto everyone which has shall be given, and from him that has not, even that he has shall be taken away from him. All together. But those my enemies which have not what I should bring over them, bring them and slay them before me. Amen. May be seated, may the Lord have a, a blessing to every doer of his word. If I were to use the subject this morning, I would have to ask us to ask ourselves a question. What type of servant am I? What type of servant? Am I? Let me say that one more time. Because I'm talking to myself. Matter of fact, y'all get me out with it today. Y'all come on with it. What, what type of servant am I? Now that means that every one of us asked ourselves that question. Now let's examine the scripture and see what the scripture tells us. Now here it is, Jesus on his way to the cross. Jesus just left the house. Of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus being a tax collector. You know the word said it works. And he and then Jesus that went to his house and sit down to have dinner with the sinner man. And turn around and the sinner man accept him and then want to give back that that he was taking. Now that's what we call true repentance. You want to give back that that I've done. See the Lord trusts us and he believes in us. So he gives us gifts and responsibility to look after us till he returns. So the thing that he gives us is for us to use for him until he comes back. Because he is coming back. He longs for us to be faithful and diligent in doing our duty. A lot of times we get tired of our duty. You know, I'm getting tired of doing this. I'm getting tired of doing that. But when I start to look at the scripture today, it should encourage us not to get tired doing good. Why is that? Because the one who don't want to do it, God said, I'll take his blessing. Oh, y'all ain't saying this right now. I'll take his blessing and give you. See, I don't know about nobody else. I'll be about everything you live. See, see, we look at what we do, but we never look at what we receive. We look at what we, what it takes out of us to do it, but we don't look at what being restored in us for doing We always look at the opposite of that. You see, he is, he is going to bring and reward those who are faithful unto him. He said that he is a reward of those that diligently see him. Jesus here was near Jerusalem, so he was trying to direct the wrong idea about the kingdom of God. See, they were thinking that as soon as he got to Jerusalem, that they, they, everything going to be set up, the kingdom of God going to be set up right there. They're going to be in, in, in power and in a different position because Jesus going to restore everything. The Romans going to be taken out of power. They're going to be set in power. Jesus, I don't really know what I got to let you know. You got, you got the wrong idea here. They will believe that God King was to be set up in Jerusalem right then. It's going to be set up in Jerusalem. And it's going to be a thousand year reign. And he's going to bring a captain with him to help rule and reign and make sure that everything has been being done in the order that he wanted to do. You see, the thing about it, we got to realize that what we do right now, this is how we are running for the 
election of the reward of being responsible in authority on the other side when we leave this place. You see, everything we receive over here just a little while. Matter of fact, these scripts even tell you. He said, seven to eight years. Mm -hmm. Three score and ten, seven. But some good read the script. He said, I add ten to an eight. So that tells us that we are temporarily here. But while we're here, we ought to get our mind right and to get our work right with God. You see, now I'm not telling you that you're working to be saved. Because we can't work to be saved. Christ has done that for us. But we can work because we are saved. Amen? So now, today I'm going to try not to go through these scriptures because there's so many of them and I know it'll take too long. So I'm going to try to point out, make a few points here. First of all, when we look at verse 11 there, he says, because he was drawn now to Jerusalem, and they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He says in verse 12, a certain old one. So what he is trying to tell them right here is, now let me rephrase that, what God is telling them, because God don't try to do anything. I'm God too big. Try. He don't try to God. He don't do it, God. Sometimes we say, you know, we don't be trying to hear God, but he don't try to do anything. He speaks to us. We just don't listen. You see, sometimes we get some stuff and we want to do things our way, but the kingdom of God is a spiritual and eternal place. It's not a physical and material thing. And this is what God wanted his followers to know that this is a spiritual place, not a physical place. See, this is why so many people get so twisted on things, to think that God is only blessing you when you are receiving the physical and material things of the world, but God blesses the eternal, and these things are temporary. Don't get it twisted now that God will not bless you while you're here, because God will bless you and overflow of blessing, because he said in his word that we seek him first, and he likes to be. He said, oh, Get me. 
to continue in motion. In continue in motion of what? What Christ has already started. You see, we just want to be continuing what Christ has started instead of us using that stuff. We know this. You'll never be. But we should be striving Amen. to be just like Jesus. Oh. Now watch this thing. Now watch this. Now nowhere else in the New Testament will you find this word occupy. And in Jesus talking to us, he said, now occupy. Why Why is that? Why, 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 why? It said, but his but his citizens hated him. Who are these citizens that hated him? I'm glad that. The citizens is the unbelievers of the world. Why do you think the unbelievers of the world reject Christ? Why do you think they don't believe in the word of God? They got their own way that they think that they want to help. But I'm here to tell you, ain't no one way to get there. Yeah. Now, wait a minute, hold on. It said Jesus went to a fuck country to get a king. Where you gonna get a king of throne? I'm glad you asked. The only place that the king of kings can get it from is to create a law. Yep. Man. Woo, we better get this thing going. So I hope, I hope that this be as good as you as it was to me. Okay. So now his servant, that means that they belong to his house. Yeah. You see, he would not talk about outside. We're talking about the inside. He believed in them and he felt he could trust them. So what did he do? He Ten pounds. Ten servants. Are y'all seeing it? Let me say it again. Ten pounds. Ten servants. So now, his servants. <coughs> watch this. They said, Ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. They said, But the citizens hated him. Mm -hmm. The people of the world hate Christ. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, y'all didn't get this. If they hate Christ, you think they love you, right? Oh, okay. You follow Christ and you expect for the world to love you. You follow Christ and you expect for your unsaved relative to love you. Come on, pal. Well. You expect for your unsaved whatever to love you. No, 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 no. They don't love what you do for them, Come on, but they're not going to love you like God don't love you. Wait a minute, verse 15 said, but it came to pass. Mm -hmm. oh, my God. 
<laughs> well, that day come. And, and the day come. He said, and it came to me. The Bible said, whatever you're doing, when I come back, just keep on doing it. Just keep on doing it. So, and you party like it's all right. I said that on the song. You can party like it's 1999. Yeah. Yeah. You said that keep on party. Keep on party. Yes, sir. Wow. Just keep on doing it. Whatever you're doing, he said, just keep on doing it. I don't know about nobody else, but I want to be praying for him when he comes back. Why? Because I want to keep on doing it. But if they don't, accounting did arrive. We got to, and he said, now watch this thing. It came to pass. And when he was returned, had received the kingdom, he got the kingdom. Then he commanded these servants. Wait a minute, the servants. Bring them here. Come here. The scripture tells us when judgment starts, it's going to start in the house. Why would God start judgment in the house among his people? Because we are supposed to be the one that's a light to the world. And we been, have been salty, bamboozled, tricked, confused, won't try to find out what the truth is. And we saw it. But he opened those things. Well, wow. The day is coming, he's coming. Why did, why did, why did? It's saying that the servant to be called unto him. Wait a minute, hold on. Every one of us got to go before him. Yeah. Individually. Well. That one time, you know, sometimes I kid with the doctors. If I go to the doctor, they say, I got to have some blood. They want to give me a shot. I said, well, you know me and my wife, we're 20 together. What can you give to her for me? <laughs> <laughs> she likes shots. I don't like shots. Okay. She go in and tell me, shoot her in the neck after her. I tell her, give me a pill. I don't care how big it is. I'll yard down on the side and get in that. Why am I saying that? She can't take this shot from me. She can only take it for herself. Every one of us got to face it for ourselves. He said, he called the servants unto him, and whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trade. In other words, now you'll find that all ten pounds were found in three fourths of action. Each one got a pound of fifty. Mm -hmm. When you look at that thing, a man take one pound. Make a ten. Make ten pounds. Nine out of fifteen. Yeah, I ain't getting it. Let me let me go on. I want y'all to see this. Now look at it. It said verse sixteen, number one, come back. Verse sixteen. It said then, came one. The first said, Lord, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Thou hast judged right. 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 Thou but every one of them is the same. What kind of servant is number one? Oh. He's a very faithful servant. Lord. Wait a minute, hold on, so y'all ain't get it. He's Lord. The one, he was so faithful, he didn't do 100%. He didn't do 200%. He did 1,000%. Yes. Can y'all see that? In other words, everywhere he went, when his mouth came over, he was talking about the goodness of God. Everything he did, he was showing the world what God looked in life. And sometimes we would say, don't you have something else to talk about except Jesus? No, sir, I sure don't. Matter of fact, I can't think of anything else to talk about. And if you want me to quit talking, tell me I can't talk about him. I'll sit there and look at you. And think about it. And, and, and think about it. Now look, that one comes back. He took that pound and the ten pound. He said unto him, Well, thy good servant, because I have been faithful in a very little. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Faithful. You want to go that long? Wait, hold on. Very little. Y'all not getting that on. The man that put in a thousand percent. Ain't no time. And he said, You done put in very little. He said, But now watch this thing. He said, Because you have put in very little. And now, have authority over ten cities. God is saying, I, 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 I'm going to make it well worth your while. Do you think that the Bible says in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 
We can't beat God yet. See, when we think about that, you know the first thing we think about in our mind we would like to hold on to? That's just one thing. What about yourself? What about your child? What about your gifts? You see, even us as pastors and preachers sometimes, that the Lord has given us a gift to say you got to pay for us to do it. Well. What do you say? Bring him up. God said, what's free to give? I said, it's free to give. You want to hear the preach? Come to the church. Bring him up. I ain't got no preaching out in the street. I ain't got no money out there. Nobody dancing around because they should play that Taylor Wing. Nobody dancing out because they should play that Wing Dixon. And nobody dancing out because they should play that ball game. But guess what? The word of God should be coming forth when they want to play. And the why that's a very faithful servant. Number one. Number two, come back. He said, Lord, that time has gained five times. All oh, that second one to put in, 500%. That's a very faithful servant. Yeah. Did y'all get this? He's faithful unto God. Guess what? He took one pound, turned it into five pounds, then he put in 500%. You see, if he had took one pound and turned it into two pounds, he could put in 100%. Mm -hmm. If he had turned it into two pounds, he put in 200%. If he had turned it into three pounds, he put in 300%. But look what he did. He put in 500%. But you know what? There's another fellow. <laughs> I want y'all, y'all need to look at this real close. Because you need to see what we put into God and what we're going to get out. Put a lot in, a lot out. But let's see what happens if you end up with that. Verse, 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 verse. 20. 20. It said, another came saying, Lord, behold, here is that time which I have kept laid up in a nap. This is what you call dead faith. No work. You know, we've been, we've been, we've been studying this dead faith thing for a while. Because, you know, James said, if you show me your faith, Without works, I show you my faith by my work. He's not saying that he didn't have faith. He's saying that your faith is dead. Can't nobody see it. So guess what? What good is your faith to God when can't nobody see it? Yes, you're saying, yes, you're going to make it in. But what good is it for the kingdom? Dead faith. Wait a minute. You know what? But dead faith is going to get your reward. Let's find out what it's going to be. It said, for I feel. I fear thee. Because thou art as, as a man, thou takest up that thou layest not down. You know what? Too many times we think we think we do God's favor. Mm. We think when we come to church we do God's favor. Mm. We think at the same time why we do God's favor. Mm. Yeah. We think that we are all set church we do God's favor. Well. We think that we preach the word and we do God a favor. But I'm here to tell you something. We are only being obedient to God. We are rewarded because of our obedience. But guess what? Even if I or you or nobody else do it, you're going to find somebody to do it. Well, and somebody is going to answer to God. And guess what? When the unfaith, when the no works, get ready to get their faith in, he's going to say, I'm going to give it to the man I know I can do it. You get that? that, that you will say, well, why would he give it to the one with ten cities and he didn't give it to the one with five? Why? Because the one with ten doesn't prove to God that you can trust me in his authority anywhere. So God said, give it to the one I'm going Amen. What kind of, what type of servant am I? Well. And we ask ourselves, well, Lord, Sometimes God wants you to be a light to your enemy. No, but the rush. Can I give me some praise? Hmm? He wants you, God wants to use you like he did with Job and his friend. When they came to him, he told them that Job had to pray for him. He told them, now you got to go to Job. But God said, I want you to pray for your enemy. I ain't praying for nobody. But you're looking for a reward for being disobedient. Well, God, you know I don't lack him. God ain't asking what you lack. Well. You are here. Listen to what it says. Servant. That means that they are servants of God. We are servants of God. Why do God have to get permission from us for him to use us? Lord. Can you imagine your child at home? 
You want to check out the garbage for you? For what? Legit, you check it out. Would you, would you mind uh, taking out the garbage for me? I don't feel like it. Don't take it out yourself. Lord Jesus. That oh, was so loud. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh.
see, we should be a light when our timing is all crossed up. We should be a light when we have got angry. We should be a light when we want to say something that we know that we should. And we should then, instead of saying that, we need to go to the Lord and pray and ask him, how can he use us to be a light to the person that's standing in front of us that might be out there? Yes, yes. But it's still, yes. instead yes. of us praying that we can produce the fruit that God wants us to produce, that we can take what he has given us and then bring some interest to it, that when he get back, that he's going to be pleased and he'll be able to reward me with more than I went to believe. Because that's what it's talking about. I'm going to give you a pound. You should have turned it into something. Every one of us, God has given us something to work with. Every believer, I don't care who you is, you have something to work with. So a wicked servant was not being condemned for what he did. The wicked servant was being condemned for what he didn't do. Are y'all getting this? That means that his sin was the sin of omission. It wasn't the sin of commission. And that's what we do so many times. It's not that we don't know that. We'll go over what we know. Why? Because I'm calling myself and I'm going to come back later on. I got my mind made. I'm going to come back later on. Thank God for years me. But right now. Well, if, you can, if your mind can comprehend that I'm going to ask for years and later, why your mind can't comprehend? I need to ask forgiveness now and ask him to help me to be what he would have me to be for this person that's that before me. Is it easy? They get caught in our sins. God, y'all need to get this. God develops distinguished he developed you. But how can God develop you into being a, distinct, a distinguished leader or a distinguished ruler when we are so selfish and self centered we don't want to go through this test to get us prepared for what God got for us? Let me talk to you folks that deal with sports. Y'all might be getting this. Sports. You got your games all year, right? Then you got what playoff games, is that correct? Then you got what regional level. Then you got the playoffs. But listen to this. Each one, watch this thing. Before you ever make it to any playoff game, you got to earn your way to get it. Have you ever heard of anybody making it to a playoff quiz? Anything. They quit because they got tired, they got mad, it was too hard, too much training, too much practice, too much drilling, too much shooting. I just don't know. But let's play off. Have you ever seen? Yes. No team? No team. Not one? Not one. Come on, man. Y'all got to have no team. You got to know a team that went to the Super Bowl game and didn't play another playoff game. They just went there. No. They ain't going to play. They, they, they went to Yeah, they went to <laughs> Well, how do we expect for us to make it to the playoffs? But we already quit. In the game. We ain't make it to the playoffs, we in the game. Yeah. But see, the game got hard. That team we playing against, they, 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 they real physical. I ain't used to physical. I ain't used to being physical. I'm, I'm used to somebody giving me a little room, you know, so I can take it, post up, and get that jump. Hit them three. I ain't using nobody all in my face. I ain't using that. So what do I do? I get frustrated. Because in my face, they won't let me shoot. Let me say that again. I'm against you, man. And you want me to stand back? Oh, don't take it, bro. Yeah, hit them all day, man. No. <laughs> well, what you think going to happen in life? Do you think the devil going to give you a bite when you didn't make that big bite? You don't want him all in your face. You better know how to play on Oh, God rewarded the very faithful 
concerned with the reward of the unfaithful. Now that's stuff for us to think about. Do you want the reward? Why do we do that? Because the man had proven himself that he could handle whatever amount of responsibility that God put on him. Let me tell you something. It ain't a believer that don't get tired. It ain't a preacher that don't want to quit. And if you have one that's truly following God, Walking in the will of God. Don't think one time he walking in some type of a road of And you know what the easiest thing it is to do? Quick. Yeah. It don't take no effort to do that. Twelve years to love. God has been amazing things with us in twelve years. He didn't do it because we disobedient. He did it because we're obedient. All you have to do is look around. And don't you know the devil is trying every way he can to get his foot through this door so he can bring division in the house of God and division against the people of God so that he can tell what God is doing? What type of servant am I? Stop looking around at what somebody else is doing. Come on now. Stop looking around. Because he didn't want no hindrance between him and his 
for you and I so we can have life. Why can't we give life every day? Give up our will for his will. And then went into hell in our place. So neither one of us have to ever taste hell and torment so we can live eternally with the Father. It was Jesus that did that for us. Jesus that was separated from man and was separated from God. That's why he said, Eli, Eli, I'm also back to that. My God, my God, why have they forsaken me? And he went down to hell for them. But the father looked at the payment of his son's blood. It pleased the father that his son would stay committed to his will and die for you and I. Yeah. He said, this payment I accept. And the girl that son Jesus is on the man. 